Well, when I first met Lee, he was just a person who hung out in clubs. I think he was a friend of a friend, and I just liked the look of him. And we just got talking, and within about two weeks, we were like best friends. He didn't dress up really, really freaky then. He dressed the same as everyone else. But then he had these plans for designing his clothes. People accepted him, probably because he was like a big bloke and he was really mouthy and really quick-witted that if anyone was rude to him, he could answer them back so well that people didn't really muck about with him. And people sort of admired his intelligence and the thoughts behind what he was doing. I liked the fact that he was so outrageous and so daring and so devilish. But a part of him was very kind of proper as well. So he knew when he was misbehaving, he knew he was misbehaving. And I loved his sort of lust for life and his great interest in everything. When he died, the Guardian rang me up to write the obituary, which was a bit weird. I didn't quite know why, but then I thought, yeah, he would want me to. So I wrote it, and bizarrely, like people going, it's really good. And then this man just got in touch with me out the blue about someone writing a book about Lee, and they said, oh, do you want to write it? So I did. Everybody who met Lee Bowery would be influenced by him in some way. A way of thinking, a way of doing things, a way of not being afraid. And the way he lived his life it gives you so much freedom to think, if I want to challenge the norm in life, I can. And I think his whole life was around it as a piece of art. <laughs>